Hey, what's going on everybody? Uh, in this video, I'm going to be covering the two requirements that you need to complete in the base game of Elden Ring in order to access the Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC. Uh, essentially, you're gonna need to complete two of the boss fights in the game, Star Scourge Radon and Moog, Lord of Blood. So uh, this is kind of later game content. However, you can complete it pretty early on in a playthrough if you focus specifically on it and do a bit of grinding. So I'll be walking through all the steps needed to uh, complete these two boss fights. Uh, for those of you that maybe haven't done that yet in your main playthrough or you're starting fresh and just want to ensure that you have access to the DLC. So starting off, currently we are in the boss room for Moog, which is found in Mogwin Palace. Uh, we'll come back to this area in a bit as I'll first talk about defeating Star Scourge Radon. That being said, uh, in the later portion of this video covering the Moog boss fight, I'll talk about accessing this particular area, which opens up a really good rune farming spot. So depending on the order that you want to do things, or if you are struggling with that Radon boss fight, you may want to access this area first, uh, just to allow you to easily grind some levels. All right, so moving on to Radon, uh, he is found in Red Main Castle, which is where we're at currently. Uh, this is in the bottom right hand corner of Kaled. Uh, you can see here on the map. You can basically get to this area immediately just by m running over here. However, you can't actually do the Radon boss fight until you kick off the Radon festival, which requires a couple steps. So there's two main ways that you can do that. The first is to activate any side of grace up in Altus Plateau up here, or you can progress through the Ronnie quest line. So I'll cover both of those methods, and then you can sort of just choose whichever one you think works best for you. Before that, though, just kind of quickly covering some things about actually getting to Red Main Castle and some things that you need to do there. So you can see it behind me here again. Uh, there's really nothing standing in your way to just running here and getting to Red Main Castle. Uh, you can run across the bridge. However, you're going to run into some trebuchets that will uh, maybe impede your progress a little bit. You can dodge them. You might get hit, but you can just kind of heal and run through. So that will get you over to this area. Another option is you can actually go to Fort Gale, which is also located in Kaelid up here. And this has a teleporter that will kind of basically just take you to that same area on the other side of the bridge. So uh, this gate's closed, but you can wrap around uh, and there's a ladder back here that will get you in there. So, oh, don't fall down. Uh, so we'll take this up. And then once at the top, we can make our way across this little guy. So there's a couple enemies you'll have to deal with, uh, but uh, you'll make your way up to this turret here. Uh, climbing this ladder will lead you to the teleporter. And then at the top here, we can take this. And that again, that'll basically just transport us to that same area we were at on the other side of the bridge. So uh, kind of two different ways to get there. Um, so here we are, and now we're over here on the other side of the bridge. So once you're over here, uh, you can make your way up the top here. Again, you can, if you want, just kind of blow. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Get out of my way! <laughs> blow through here. Uh, and then, again, this gate's going to be closed. Uh, so that there is a, a back way here that you can take. And here, once we get over to this area, uh, you've got sort of an access to this ladder, and that will take you into the actual... Um, Redmain Castle. So once inside, uh, you'll want to navigate through and make your way eventually to this area. And there's this Site of Grace here, which is the chamber outside the Plaza Site of Grace. Uh, when you first get here, this next room will actually be blocked off by a boss wall. And this is going to require you to defeat a double boss fight of a Misbegotten Warrior and a Crucible Knight, which um, depending on your level and whatnot, it can be a bit of a challenging fight. Uh, given that you have to fight two bosses at the same time. Basically, the Misbegotten Warrior comes out first, and then once he's at like half health, then the Crucible Knight shows up, and then you have both of them that you have to deal with. So, again, it can kind of be a challenging fight. I'll show footage of me defeating that boss fight. Uh, maybe that'll be helpful. Um, but basically, the strategy for me was just defeat the Misbegotten Warrior as fast as possible, and then I used the um, Marionette Archer Warriors as my Spirit Ashes, uh, those seem to work quite well, um, and you can Google where those are at if you want to use those. They're pretty straightforward to get in the Rhea Lucaria area. But basically using the archers to distract the Crucible Knight and then sort of attack him from behind and whatnot. But um, I'll show that footage. Again, maybe that'll just sort of help uh, give you a better idea of a strategy on how to complete that if you're struggling with it. But uh, once you get that done, you'll then have access to this area. And this is like this kind of leads into the fact that you need to 
complete a couple things to kick off the Redon Festival. So if you're at this point, you won't be able to progress any further until you do that. So now we'll kind of get into the things that you need to do to actually start the Redon Festival so then you can actually fight Star Scourge Redon. All right, so that was the boss fight to give you access to this area. Uh, now we'll go through the two different ways you can kick off the Radon Festival, either going the route of activating a Site of Grace in Altus Plateau or g progressing through Ronnie's Questline. If you want to go the Altus Plateau route, which I think is probably the most straightforward, uh, you can actually do that in two different ways as well. So uh, the first, which I'll cover, is you can take, as you obviously you have to sort of make your way to this point in the game, but as you're making your way through the map, um, up in here, there is kind of a back way you can take, which this will lead up a lift and I'll, I'll kind of walk through this. Uh, and that sort of then leads you up into this area. Uh, and then the other way is to get two halves of a Dectus medallion. You then use the Dectus medallion to activate the grand lift of Dectus that then takes you into Altus Plateau as well. So, um, the, the way I did it, I think is again, sort of the most straightforward way is just to take this back way. So we'll talk about that first. So to go this route, uh, first you will have to sort of get to a point in the game where you have access to the Liurnia of the Lakes area. Uh, and then really it's just a matter of running through the, the lake and this sort of ravine area to this point here. Uh, this will lead, there's a site of Grace Deer here at the bottom. And then basically uh, you're just going to climb up uh, a variety of ladders and go through a series of caves and whatnot. Uh, fairly straightforward, but we'll just kind of walk through the process here. So we've climbed up all the ladders. Now we're entering this cave system. Uh, again, you just kind of you can spend time in here if you want, or just kind of run through. You'll eventually hit this lift that will take you up a little bit higher. Once you reach the top, just kind of continue. Again, there's there's some things you can explore if you want to do that, um, but you can kind of continue to run through the cave system, uh, and there will be an exit up here. That will lead uh, to this area. So now you can see we're <laughs> quite a bit higher than where we started. And uh, this will, again, lead to another lift that'll take us up even higher. So we can uh, get that going. 
then we'll run through this area. Basically, we're going to wrap around and make our way up to the top there. All right, so we've made it to the very top. Uh, so we've kind of started all the way down there, went through the caves, wrapped around, climbed ladders, etc. made it all the way up here. Uh, there's a side of grace here. So now this is kind of the, the roadblock of this route, essentially, is there is going to be a magma worm boss fight in this uh, room here. So uh, you do have to get through that boss fight. It's not a super difficult fight, um, depending, again, what level you are. Um, but you will have to defeat that to open up the next area, which actually gives you access to the Altus Plateau. Uh, once you defeat him, there is another side of grace here you can activate. Um, but then continue up through here, and that will take you into the Altus Plateau region. So then finally, uh, you can see now we're in the Altus uh, Plateau region. And basically, we just need to activate a Site of Grace, uh, and there's one right here. So that should uh, meet the requirements to start the Redon Fest Festival, as uh, one of the requirements is just you, you need to activate a Site of Grace within this region. The other option is to use the Grand Lift of Dectus, which will take you up into the Altus Plateau region. Um, that requires you first find the two halves of the Dectus Medallion. So the first half can be found in Limgrave at Fort Height, which is where we're at currently. So that would be this spot here. And then once you make your way into this area, you're going to want to climb up this turret and it'll be in a chest, which uh, will give you the medallion. So once you get up to the top of the ladder, uh, here's the chest and that's where you'll find the first half of the medallion. The other half can be found at Fort Faroth, uh, kind of similar type of setup here, but this is located in Kaled. Uh, again, there's a site of grace right outside there as well. Um, again, basically kind of the same thing, just kind of run into this area uh, and there's going to be a chest which will contain the medallion. So uh, there are some enemies here you can just kind of run through if you want to. Uh, and then we'll want to take this ladder right up here. And then once you reach the top, uh, you'll have a chest here and that will contain the right side of the medallion. Uh, so now you'll have both sides which then can be used to activate the Grand Lift of Dectus. You can get to the Grand Lift of Dectus in a couple different ways. Um, so currently we're at uh, Liernia of the Lakes. I'm at this um, East Gate Bridge trestle side of Grace. Uh, and there's a horse elevator thing uh, right over here by where the mausoleum is. So uh, that's one way. You can just kind of run, run down here next to the, the cliff edge. So there's the, the mausoleum and then here's the lift. So you can take this uh, and that will get you into the sort of general area of where you need to go. So once you reach here, um, you can then take the path to the Grand Lift of Dectus here. The other option, uh, if you have this um, main Academy Gate site of Grace, you can also use this and then uh, activate this little teleporter guy here, and that will basically transport you over to the exact same spot we just were at. So um, two different ways, uh, depending on where you're at. Uh, one can be easier than the other, but basically lead to the same spot. So now we get teleported. Uh, right where that uh, horse uh, lift took us, and then again, just kind of making our way down this path to the, the Grand Lift. So it's pretty much a straight shot uh, to this spot here, so now we're currently right at the entrance. Um, there are some enemies, and they've got some trebuchets and blockades stuff going on, but you can really just kind of run through that um, and dodge as you need to. So just kind of, again, just sort of a straight shot taking this path and then it'll lead you to the entrance here. So um, once you get to this spot, uh, that again will lead to where the actual lift is so we can make our way up there. And then here is where the lift is and then this is where we'll use the, the medallion halves to activate the lift. So you'll come up here, go through the, the cutscene and whatever, hoist the medallion, uh, and then this will activate the lift and take us up to the Altus Plateau region. Once you get to the top, uh, kind of same situation as taking the back route, we just need to go find a uh, Site of Grace, which there's one to the left up here. Uh, and once we activate that, that will then meet the requirements for starting the Redon Festival. So we can go right up here, and then you've got a Site of Grace here that you can activate. Now moving on to the other option for activating the Redon Festival, and that is progressing Ronnie's questline. Um, you don't have to complete it fully, you just sort of have to get to a certain point of the quest. So uh, this is a little bit more involved than the Altus Plateau strategy, but um, I, if, you, if you do want to complete Ronnie's questline, then this is one way you could do it, and it's just sort of killing two birds with one stone. Not only are you progressing the questline, but you're also activating Redon's Festival. So uh, again, depending on what you want to do. So uh, 
in terms of this kind of, I guess the main starting point of this would be to get to a point where you're making your way through Leonity of the Lakes and you need to get up to this Caria Manor location. Uh, so this, after, as you make your way through here, that will then get you to Ronnie's Rise, which then sort of kicks off the main quest. So uh, we are at currently the entrance of Caria Manor. And again, you can kind of just walk here. There's nothing really blocking your way in terms of doing that. And so you'll, you'll progress through here uh, and then make your way up to a, another boss fight, which is uh, this area here. So we'll go there real quick. Uh, again, kind of making your way through the castle, pretty straightforward, just kind of progress through and you'll eventually get to uh, this room, which is the um, Royal Knight Loretta. So you'll need to defeat uh, that boss, which this will be, you'll make your way up these stairs here, and then this will be a boss wall. So get to this point, uh, defeat Loretta, you'll have this uh, Site of Grace, and then we'll uh, make our way up to Ronnie's Rise to begin that quest line. So here we are now at Ronnie's Rise. Um, you can see here on the map. And she's gonna be at the very top, so we can make our way in and go talk to her to kick off kind of the main part of this quest. So as we get to the top of this lift and wrap around these stairs, she will be right here. Um, you'll go through some dialogue. Uh, there's a prompt where it's like she asks for you to join her or something along those lines. So you'll say yes. Uh, and then basically we're gonna have to go through a series of um, meeting some characters, going through some dialogue, uh, and then that will eventually lead to activating the Radon Festival. So we'll kind of go through that now. So as you come back down after talking to Ronnie and kind of make your way back down to the main floor, uh, you're going to run into a couple characters to talk to. Uh, you'll talk to E.G., Blythe, and Celibus. So they will appear um, here uh, in these bottom floor areas. Um, you can talk to them, go through their dialogue, and then that will lead to the sort of next step to progress this, which is then to go find Blythe, who is down in the... Um, oh, let's go on the map here down in the Siofra River area. So I think he's around here somewhere. So we'll go uh, go to that area uh, and talk to him to progress the next aspect of, of the quest line. If you haven't been to the Siofra River well area yet, you can get access to it in Limgrave uh, from this. Uh, there's a lift right here in this building. Um, so this is kind of where we're at on the map here. Make your way over here, uh, get to this building, and there's gonna be a lift that will take you down to that area. So that's where Blythe is. Um, I do have a site of grace, so the Siofer River Bank site of grace is pretty nearby to where he's at. So we can take that, uh, and then he's just kind of a short run from there. So, um, here we are, and we're just gonna, again, just kind of a quick run this direction. He's gonna be right over here, uh, like right, right, right there. So, make our way over there, and then make our way through here. Here's the waypoint I just sent. So yeah, he's gonna be kind of hanging out right here. So we'll talk to him, go through some dialogue, and then he's gonna have us talk to Celibus. So then we're gonna have to kind of go back to Ronnie's Rise and talk to Celibus for a bit. So here's the tower where you can find Celibus to talk to him. Uh, I guess kind of right down the street from uh, Ronnie's house. So you can take the uh, side of grace here and just kind of make your way down here to this tower and you can find him uh, in this building. Uh, as you go through this dialogue, uh, there will be a prompt to ask about Nakron, and then that will lead into him bringing up uh, another person that you need to talk to called Selen. So he gives you a letter of recommendation or something like that, uh, which you can take to her. Uh, so that's kind of the next step is go through this dialogue, and now we'll go talk to Selen, uh, which then will kind of lead into the Rodan Festival. She is located in Limgrave, uh, so this is where we're at on the map. She's in these waypoint ruins. I'll zoom out a little bit more here. So. Uh, she'll be located in here. Uh, there's her icon as well as this Waypoint Ruin Site of Grace, which we'll activate here in a second. Uh, but basically, yeah, you just kind of make your way right into here, and then there's going to be some stairs down to where she's located. There is going to be like a mini sort of pumpkin head boss fight, nothing too crazy, kind of a quick fight. But that will give you access to the Site of Grace after that's done, as well as access into the room where she's located back here. So uh, again, similarly, go through some dialogue. Uh, give her the letter that Celibus gave you, uh, and then she'll start talking about Radon a little bit. Once you go through that, you can then go back to Blythe in the Siofa River. He'll be in the same spot. So you can go back here, uh, kind of complete the final dialogue related to Radon. He'll 
mention that there's a festival for Radon, the Radon Festival, uh, and talk about how you can fight him, etc. So you'll go through that dialogue. Uh, once you get through that, that's kind of the last dialogue thing that you need to do. Uh, and then we can go back to the Red Main Castle side of Grace. And at that point, uh, the festival will be active and we can uh, talk to Jaren to kick off the actual fight with Star Scourge Radon. All right, so once you've completed one of the two options to meet the requirements for the Radon Festival, whether it was the Altus Plateau option or Ronnie's quest line, uh, this area is going to look a little bit different, so there's going to be some characters hanging out for the festival. Uh, Jaren's going to be up here on the stage as well, kind of giving his whole speech. So we can go up these stairs and talk to him, and that will lead to a prompt basically saying uh, we're ready to fight Radon. Uh, that'll kick off a cutscene for him. After that cutscene, you can then head out into this building, and that's going to take you down to a teleporter, uh, which will then lead into this uh sort of battlefield back there, which is where we fight Star Scourge Radon. So head in here, and just around the corner here, there is a lift, so we can take that real quick. And then at the bottom here, you can see the teleporter down there by the water. So uh, that's really, that's it. So once we get to this point, we can activate the teleporter. It'll ask us if we want to travel to another location. So once you hit yes, that's going to officially kick off the boss fight. Uh, and really the last step is really just to defeat Star Scourge Radon to complete this portion of it. In terms of the actual boss fight and completing that, um, I'll show footage of me doing it. Uh, on this playthrough, I think I was level 45. Uh, and I used my Bloodhound's Fang, which I think I had upgraded to like plus 5 or something along those lines. So with that, um, I didn't struggle too much. It was a fairly straightforward fight. I would say the main strategy is just ensuring that you're utilizing all those little uh, helper NPCs that you can sort of call in to help you fight. Uh, so there's, if you watch the footage, you'll see me doing that, but there's like markers on the ground and you can call in Blythe and some of the other characters. Uh, and they do a really good job just sort of distracting him while you go in and damage dump. So really just kind of making sure all those characters are active and helping you out, uh, healing as necessary and just sort of grinding out damage. Uh, and doing that, uh, again, pretty straightforward. So you can watch that footage. Uh, and then after that, we'll get into talking about Moog, Lord of Blood in Moogwin Palace.
All right, so one down, uh, one to go. Moving on now to Moog, uh, Lord of Blood, who's found in Mogwin Palace. So kind of like the Radon Festival, there's a couple different ways you can technically do this. The first is to go through the Vade quest line, which is probably the more standard way of doing this. However, there's technically another way, which involves getting to the concentrated snow fields. Uh, within that area, there's a teleporter that will just take you directly there. Um, that being said, that's sort of a very late game area of uh, the game. And so it's technically, I guess, more straightforward and quicker, but you have to get through the entire game to get to that point. So uh, we'll start with the Vade quest line and go through that. And then at the end of this, I'll just I'll also show you where that teleporter is located. So uh, in terms of Vade, he is actually one of the first characters that you meet. He's right at the beginning of the game here. Uh, we're at the first step side of Grace. So you kind of come out of this building and then he's standing right here. Uh, and you have some introductory dialogue with him. So he's kind of the main character of this whole thing. So we'll be interacting with him quite a bit through this quest. Uh, and this is sort of your first interaction with him right here. The next thing that you're going to need to do or have done already is defeat Godric the Grafted. So he is in this room here, uh, which is in Limgrave. So kind of have to, it, I, if you haven't done so yet, get to this point of the game and defeat Godric the Grafted here. So kind of make your way through this castle. Uh, and then you'll also need to go to Round Table Hold. So go to the Table of Lost Grace. Uh, once you defeat Godric, that opens up this room with Enya, the finger reader. So uh, you'll need to talk to her. After you do that, that then moves Vade to the next area to progress the quest. So after you have all that done, that moves Vade to this new area. So he'll be standing outside this rose church right here. Um, this is in Lierni of the Lakes. So there's this Fallen Ruins side of Grace. If you have that, it's just straight west of there. So head over here and start talking to him. Uh, he'll go through some dialogue and he'll ask you about the two fingers and you'll have two options. One is like you think they're magnificent or the other is you think something doesn't seem right. Uh, you wanna choose the option that something doesn't seem right and that will progress uh, the dialogue. And he'll eventually give you some bloody fingers which are these things. So this allows you to invade other players in PVP, things like that. So uh, you need to use these three times to sort of meet that requirement and continue the quest. Uh, however, like for me, I play offline. So obviously you can't invade other players in offline. So there is another option and that is to use the invasion of the Magnus the Beast Claw, which is sort of an NPC character that you can fight instead. So um, A, if you wanna do it on online, you can just straight up just use bloody fingers three times. Uh, you can also use the finger sever. So you can basically just like invade, then sever, invade, and sever, invade, sever, then you're done. And then you can continue to the next step. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can go do the Magnus, the Beast Claw step, which I'll show you uh, here next. So here's the offline method. Um, the one downside of this is that it is located in Altus Plateau. So if you haven't gotten to this point yet, um, that's sort of a roadblock, but this is where it's located. Uh, it's at this Wrythblood Ruins area. So there's gonna be a sign here on the ground right at this spot. So this is just zooming in here. This is where it would be. Uh, if you activate that, it'll ask you to use a bloody finger to invade. Uh, Magnus the Beast Claw. So um, I invaded him and used three bloody fingers. So I invaded left, invaded left, invaded left three times. Uh, and that worked. I'm assuming if you just invade the first time and kill him, that would also work. But I don't, I can't, I can't say that for certainty. So uh, to be safe, I just invaded him three times and then I went back to Vade and progressed from there. So uh, this is the other option as well. Uh, if you want to stay offline and not necessarily do the, the online PvP invasion aspect of it. After you've used the three bloody fingers, uh, you can then go back and start talking to Vade again. Uh, this will progress the dialogue and he'll ask you to serve under Moog essentially. Uh, accept that offer and then he'll give you another task which he'll hand you a cloth which you need then to soak in maiden's blood. So we'll do that next. So this can be done in the Church of Inhibitions, uh, which is located over here. Uh, if you haven't gotten up here yet, uh, it's a little, it can be a little tricky to get there. So just kind of a quick tutorial. Um, I think the best way to do it is to start from the Grand Lift of Dectus. Um, I did just talk about that if you haven't been here yet um, in sort of the Star Scourge Radon portion of this video. So if you need help getting there, uh, rewind a couple minutes. <laughs> um, but uh, once you, uh, start from there uh, you can just sort of take a left here uh, make your way up this hill and then uh, you're gonna run into this guy you can for the most part if you just keep running you can just sort of ignore it but it's gonna have a madness build up 
uh, which can be kind of annoying if it gets full. But if you again, if you just sort of hug the wall uh, and just run through, it uh, shouldn't be too big of an issue. So just kind of keep running, uh, staying close to the wall here. And then eventually you'll get to an opening here for this village. Again, all these people have madness, so just kind of keep running. And then make your way up this hill. And then now we can see uh, the church up here. So um, just kind of keep making your way up this hill. And then once we get there, uh, that's where the maiden is going to be, unfortunately, dead, sitting in a chair. So we can go in here. There is a side of grace you can grab as well. Here is the maiden. And then you can. there will be a prompt for you to soak the cloth. So that will cover that aspect of it. And then one final time, you'll need to return to the Rose Church to talk to Vade. Uh, again, go through dialogue. Uh, he'll cut off your finger. So you offer your finger to him. He'll cut it off. And then in return, kind of, he'll give you this uh, item, which is the... Oh, you can't see that. I guess you can. But uh, the Pure Blood Knight's Medal. So using this will teleport you to Mogwin Palace. So you can use that. Uh, you can see, go to the audience grounds. Uh, and this is basically all you, I mean, there's still portions of the, the Vade quest that you can complete. I'm not going to get into that, but this is all you need to do to, uh, defeat Moog essentially, because you're now in Mogwin Palace. So we'll, uh, talk about actually getting to his location and defeating him. Before that though, just real quick showing you the other way to get to Mogwin Palace, which again is sort of a more of a end game, late game type way of getting there. Uh, and that is the, taking this teleporter. So this is located... Uh, in the concentrated snowfields area. So uh, kind of the quickest way to get there is from this uh, side of grace here. And then this is the location of the teleporter. So again, uh, if you've gotten to this point in the game, then this is, you know, technically way faster <laughs> to get there just because you don't have to go through the whole quest line. But again, to get to this point in the game takes a lot of time. So uh, if you're not here, it's, it's faster just to do the Vade stuff. So uh, again, uh, this is where it's at and you can just take this guy and it kind of spits you out in this uh, location in Mogwin Palace. So we'll just do that real quick so you can see that. So uh, let's see, I got to remember. Uh, I don't have my lantern. Takes you into this cave and then, yeah, so now we're in, we're in Mogwin Palace here, or Mogwin Palace. So that's, again, another way uh, if you happen to be at that point in the game and you never did the Vade stuff, you can just sort of skip all it if you want to and just take that teleporter. Now that we're in Mogwin Palace, um, there is some other stuff you can do here. Uh, I'm not really going to get into a whole lot of that. It's basically just focusing strictly on getting to Mog. So um, to do that, uh, you're going to want to head up these stairs here. And uh, there's a side of grace you can grab right here as well. And you're going to want to make your way up this hill. Um, Again, I'm, I'll first I'll kind of show you how to get there. Uh, and then there's actually a couple things in this game, like items and stuff, specifically to Moog and fighting that boss fight, which is kind of interesting. So um, we'll kind of get to Moog first, uh, and then we'll sort of back up for a second and talk about some items uh, and things that will help in that actual fight. So uh, again, kind of, if we can get through here. Uh, uh, no, oh, okay. So keep making your way through here. You're going to want to go through this um, little cave thing here. Uh, so going in through here, you will run into some enemies. I'm just going to kind of blow through all this stuff. Uh, hang a right and then uh, make your way kind of straight back through that way. So there's a little ramp we can take over here. And then again, I've got some enemies chasing me, I think. But you can just kind of run through. Uh, so here's the exit, so keep going through here. So once you're here, here's the last side of grace you can grab, so uh, make sure you get that. Uh, and I guess uh, I got people, and so these are the people chasing me. Um, just to kind of show you where we're at on the map here. Uh, so we started, that was that first side of grace we grabbed. This is where we came in uh, initially, grabbed the side of grace and kind of made our way up here. So now we're here. Uh, keep going, and then um, there is a ancient somber smithing stone in that chest up there, just FYI. Um, but here's a lift, so activate this. And at the top of this is going to be where the boss room is for Moog. So uh, there is a Merica statue, so you'll 
you'll if you die you'll just spawn right back here again every time but this will be a boss wall uh and then this is going to be where moog the actual fight takes place and um this is kind of where we were at the the beginning of this video when i did the introduction so um anyways so this is where the, the boss is now we'll kind of get into um, a couple items if you don't have them already that are pretty useful to use uh, to get through this fight because it is sort of a higher level end game type boss fight. So first off, uh, since we're here, I uh, just started talking about the rune farm that's in Mogwin Palace. So if you're not aware, uh, one of the other things that this area is really well known for is there's a crazy good spot to farm runes and level up your character. So if you are struggling with this boss fight and you want to get a little bit more powerful, uh, there is a spot here where you can just grind levels super efficiently. So uh, we are back in where we first teleported in. Uh, kind of a cool view here of the, the boss arena up there. So that's where we just were. Uh, so kind of a cool view there. But anyways, um, for this, we want to go down these stairs rather than going up those stairs like we did to go up to the boss area. And uh, first, just kind of blow through this area. Um, there's going to be some enemies that pop up. Just kind of run through this forested area. Uh, you'll then reach kind of a lake of blood here. So we'll make our way through this area. And on the other side, you'll see this hill leading up to where the, the rune farm spot is. So make your way up here. And this is basically the area. So all of these guys are what we're going to farm for runes. So there is a side of grace you can quickly grab. So if you do that, uh, you can basically just reset this whole spot over and over again. So, okay. So now uh, kind of reset the area. Uh, in general, the general idea is just sort of go down and blow through all these guys. You get about 2,000 runes for each kill. Uh, so basically just run down, kill all these guys, uh, rest at the side of grace to reset them, and then just sort of repeat that over and over again. There are also a couple weapons you can use to make this even more efficient. Uh, in particular, the Star Scourge Greatsword. So if you did just defeat uh, Star Scourge or Dawn, or if you've done previously, uh, and got the Star Scourge Greatsword using the Remembrance, um, that's a really good weapon to... Uh, again, make this even more efficient. So technically, you can just go kill kill them one by one, uh, which works. Uh, but for example, using something like this Dark Surge uh, Greatsword, which has an area of effect attack. So if you keep an eye on my runes down in the bottom right corner, uh, you can see how quickly we can level up some runes by using this attack here. So I sort of suck them all in, and you can see I've, I'm you know making tons of runes here. So Again, the idea, just sort of wiping all these guys out. Again, if you have the uh, Star Scourge Greatsword, that helps quite a bit. And then, uh, so we went from 40,000, now I've got 70,000. And you can just reset and just sort of do it all over again. So that's kind of the general idea, uh, and just going back and forth. And if you need it to level up and get more powerful because you're struggling a little bit, uh, this is a really efficient way to do that. So now looking at some gear and items you can get that are specifically good for fighting and defeating Moog. Uh, starting off, kind of sticking with the Radon theme, talking about his greatsword, you can also get his full armor set, which is what I'm currently wearing now and what I used to defeat him. Um, so not only does this set have just really good stats in general, uh, if you look at it, it also has really high robustness resistance, which uh, helps fight off blood attacks. Uh, so if you're not aware, uh, after you defeat Radon, you can purchase this in round table hold. So if we go to the table of lost grace um, and go to Enya, the finger reader, um, after you defeat bosses, you can buy items specifically to that boss. So if we go talk to her and go to the equipment of champions. Here, after you've defeated bosses, you can buy their equipment. So here's the helmet, the chest, the, the gauntlets, and the, the greaves. So if you are looking for a good armor set, uh, this is a good choice, I think. So you can get that here. Next is an item called Moog Shackle. Uh, this isn't necessarily required, but it is a really useful item to use against Moog. Uh, it's literally an item specifically to be used in this boss fight against him. Um, so uh, kind of showing you that in our inventory here. Uh, this is it right here. So basically this allows you to shackle him down. Uh, twice during the fight in his first phase and just sort of disables him for a brief moment uh, Which again is very valuable, especially if you're kind of struggling This is a really useful item to sort of help you get over that hump So um, I'll show you footage of the, of the actual boss fight so you can kind of see that in action but um, Getting this item is a little bit more involved depending on where you're at in the game 
So I'm not going to go into super detail on how to get all the way over here, but it is in Lindell uh, near this underground roadside side of Grace. So again, uh, if you need help getting to this area, there's probably all sorts of resources online you can can search for. But uh, if you do have this, this side of Grace, it's a pretty quick trip uh, down this ladder here. And you just kind of, there are some enemies that are fairly deadly down here. Uh, depending on what your level are uh, level is, they can kind of one-shot you. Um, so you gotta have to be careful, but you can if you're if you're careful uh, Just kind of run down here real quick and grab it. It's so like these lobster things will end your day real quick um, Oh god. Oh god Leave me alone. Leave me alone. So run through here quickly quickly. No oh god So again depending on what your level is uh, da, 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 da. I didn't really want to fight these guys. I just wanted to get here. Leave me alone. So he's gonna be right here uh, there's gonna be a corpse here that you can grab uh, and that will have Moog Shackle and now I'm gonna run away but that's where it's at so again if you need any other help uh, getting there there's all sorts of resources that you can can search for that but that's where that's located there's also another item that is specifically to be used during this boss fight which is kind of interesting uh, that there's two items just specifically for this fight but uh, that is the um, purifying crystal tier so this can be mixed in your wondrous physic as one of your two tiers that you use and this will purify his curse so he does a, a, an attack that this will sort of negate which is again not required but again really useful if you're if you're looking for something to help you uh, defeat him and you're kind of struggling a little bit so uh, again this one is a little bit more involved as well uh, it involves going through a little bit of a, a quest line nothing too crazy but i'll just kind of walk through the steps here quickly so uh, this involves a character called Yura. He can initially be found here. This part isn't required. He does move uh, as you progress through the game. So if you miss him at the beginning of the game, not a big deal. But uh, this is where you would first find him in Limgrave. So uh, again, whether you talk to him yet or not, it uh, doesn't really matter. But this is where he'd first be found. Uh, and then we're going to want to head down this ravine here. Uh, so that's where we'll head next. As you're running down this river here, uh, you will get invaded by Bloody Finger Narius. So he'll come running down, charging at you. So once you defeat him, uh, you can then go talk to Yura. Uh, he is going to be hanging out around this corner here uh, underneath these ruins. So uh, you defeat the invasion and then talk to him. He'll go through some dialogue. He'll be hanging out right around here. Uh, and then that'll progress to the next portion of this quest. You'll then want to travel to the main academy gate, Site of Grace. Uh, and from there, uh, head down towards the end of this bridge and there's going to be a red summon sign that you can activate. Uh, this will ask you to uh, invade with Yura and assist him in a fight that you'll need to do. So once you complete that fight, uh, then you'll get returned to this area and he'll be hanging out uh, right around here. Uh, so then you'll talk to him again to progress to the next step. Finally, the last step of this, we need to go to Altus Plateau and get to the Second Church of America. So uh, again, depending on what Sites of Grace you have and where you're at in the game, uh, there is this Site of Grace, which is somewhat close. So um, that's what I'm taking. <laughs> uh, but from there, a uh, little bit of a, a run to get to the church. So right at this spot, this is where I'm at here from, there's a side of grace, so just kind of straight west of there. There's a lift you can take uh, that will take you up to the sort of level that the church is on. Uh, and then you can see it here. So uh, once we get to this church, there's going to be one more final invasion that we'll need to complete. So we'll, you'll see Yura, he'll be, oops, work with me horse. Um, you'll see Yura on the ground. He'll be laying on the ground here, and then you'll get invaded. Once you complete that final fight, uh, your reward will sort of be the um, the uh, tier. So you'll have this, uh, and then again, you can mix that in a wondrous physic and use that during the fight, which will then negate that, that curse that he uses. Okay, so now getting into a little bit about the actual fight itself. Uh, I will show footage of me defeating him if you want to watch that, but... Uh, Let's see, so I'm currently 94. I think I was like high 80s when I defeated him. I also used my Bloodhound's Fang, which I have leveled up to plus seven. Uh, another thing that I haven't talked about, which is really good to have, is the Mimic tier. So I have this leveled up to plus four. 
Uh, this is located in Nakron City. If you haven't gotten it yet, I highly recommend you go get this. If you don't and use it for this fight, uh, you can Google that location if you want to, if you need resources for that. Um, and then obviously what we talked about using the Moog Shackle as well as the Purifying Crystal Tear. So for my Wondrous Physic, I had one of my Crystal Tears is for health and then the other is using the Purifying Crystal Tear. So um, basically my strategy when I went into this, summon my Mimic Tear right at the beginning, then use my Wondrous Physic to get my health back as well as get the Curse Negation. So once that's done, just sort of going in, uh, using the shackle to shackle him down for one instance, and then uh, just really trying to damage dump and get a stagger hit so then I can follow up with a critical. That's usually enough to get him through the first phase. Uh, in the second phase, he does sort of a move where he does a health regeneration. He'll kind of sit there and do health regeneration. Uh, so while he's going into that second phase, again, just trying to get as much damage done as possible and just sort of really being aggressive with him, which seemed to work. Uh, and then trying to get another stagger hit for that second phase, followed up by a critical. Uh, if I was able to do that, it seemed like that was enough damage to sort of just finish him off on the second phase. So that's kind of what happens in this fight. So I'll show that footage now, uh, and you can kind of watch that if you want an idea of how I went about doing this. All right, so I think that pretty much covers it. If you made it all the way through this video, uh, everything you need to know for the most part uh, that will get you to a point where you can jump right into the DLC for Elden Ring, uh, the Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC. So uh, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, thank you for watching and we will see you later. Bye.